Capirotada. Capirotada. Isn't it such a great name? I love it. Today, we're going to learn how to make capirotada. Hi, come on in. Let me see who's here. Super excited. Oh, I see Ashley and Lou. Hi, Lou. Oh, and Marco and Genevieve. And I see Sarah. And oh, is that? Cecilia, I see. Oh, come on in. Thank you so much for coming. Let's start by saying thank you to Northgate for bringing us together. This is a lovely community and I am sincerely grateful that they provide this for us. But since this is a lengthy recipe, let's get started. First things first, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. So go ahead and if you're a little one, have your parents help you. But if you're not, come on, let's get this oven started. So 400 degrees. All right. So today we're going to play with Gapirotada. And I say play because I'm not going to make the traditional one. We're going to make it with pan dulce. And you could use bolillos, which people usually use, or they use like a French bread. But pan dulce, I feel, takes gapirotada from here to here. So I've always used pan dulce. And luckily, Northgate has such a beautiful variety. We're going to use Northgate pan dulce. So here we go. You can see I have all of my pan dulce here. I'm only going to use four conchas. But here we go. Let me just make sure you can see it. Can you all see that? Yes, perfect. we can. OK, perfect. So. First, you just take a pan dulce. I bought this one yesterday and I like to have it sit out overnight. Um, fresh pan dulce works as well, but even if it's a few days old, that's perfect. And I'm just gonna slice it. And I'm using a serrated knife because it's easier to slice with that. So you just go ahead and we're gonna do half inch slices. So there you go. Be careful. If you're a child, if you are not a child, then you'll be fine. Okay. And since I'm, oh, by the way, you see all of this little crumb that's falling, we want to reserve that for our capirotada. Usually people decorate the top with candy sprinkles. Um, I have those too, but I like to use the colorful topping from the pan dulce right on top. So, woo, it's Saturday. Are we excited? I know that, I know that with Lent, people usually give up eating meat. Um, and a lot of people feel like it's a big, a big sacrifice. But for me, I feel like we also get capirotada during Lent season. And it's a gift. It's a lovely gift. Okay. So I'm almost done slicing. And I like to keep these little edges because there will be parts in the dish where we need to fill it up and those little edges come in handy. Okay. How's everyone doing this morning? Look at the color, this pink color is so gorgeous, right? Try to keep these ones for the top of the capirotada just cause 
the pink pops, the pink and the yellow. You know what, I'm gonna cut an extra one just in case. So I have five conchas that are sliced here. Okay. Okay, perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to just take each, get some butter. If you, by the way, you can, you can veganize this, you can veganize this recipe. Um, I'm adding butter to the, I'm adding butter to each goncha, but if you don't want to add any dairy to this, you don't have to. I like to do it because it adds a little extra crunch to the to each piece of pan dulce. And literally, I'm taking just the smallest amount of butter and swiping it on each side. So just enough to give it a little bit, just enough to give it a little crunch when it's in the oven. So you could see here, there's just very little butter on each side and I'm gonna take every single piece that I just cut and, and, and smear it with butter. And you do the same. Let me know if I'm going too fast or if you have any questions. All right. And just line up each slice of your pan dulce on the on the on the baking sheet. I have a baking sheet here lined with aluminum foil. It's it makes for easy cleanup. Okay. Believe me, it's worth the time to butter each slice. Like it adds an extra crunch and flavor. Like this, this dish is all about layering and the layer of flavors. And I know when I first started learning how to make capirotada, I was, I was a little bit shocked by what went in it. I thought, wow, that's interesting. Like that all of these layers of flavors and some savory and some sweet. Um, but then you think about, you think about history and how people like, let's take apple pie, for instance, how people will put a slice of cheddar cheese on apple pie. Did you know that? And it's, seriously delicious. So the idea of putting savory with cheese is, is very common, actually. If you think about cheese boards, cheese boards have cheese and fruits and little breads, and it all tastes so delicious together. So even though it is, it is an interesting variety of flavors, it's also an interesting variety of colors in your mouth. It's just, it's, it's fun. It's a good recipe. Okay. Let's keep on going with the butter. Is everyone keeping up with me? Are you baking along with me this morning? Nicole. Question, it, should they preheat their oven already? Absolutely. It was the first thing we did. We wanted to preheat our oven to 400 degrees so that we can toast these little panecitos. Okay. And then you just make a little mosaic on your on your tray. We're preheating our oven to 400 degrees. I, I know I, I keep repeating it, but in case somebody didn't hear. OK. 
Okay. If you're not baking along, just so you know, Northgate will be posting this video up on their website. So you'll be able to replay it at your convenience. But I hope you are baking along. I love the idea of Saturday morning bake fest, especially with its capirotada. I, I advertised this class on, on my Instagram this week and I was telling pe people when I was younger I used to call myself Capirotada. I loved the name so much. I thought it was so interesting that sometimes I would just say like some you know if I met somebody that I didn't know and they asked me what my name is I would say oh hi I'm Capirotada. I know. That's a cute story. <laughs> it's a fun name it's so it's so interesting to say like the r rolls and it's just it's 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 a it's a fun name right plus i don't know I know that I've I've had some people ask me why do you use why do you use pan dulce and I think initially I used it because I loved all the color, um, you know, Lent leads up to Easter and you always have a little capirotada at Easter time too, so I just feel like it it was in line with, you know, all the colors of Easter. But I promise you it's a game changer as far as what this dish tastes like. It'll be hard to ever go back to the bolillo. <laughs> and you could say that with confidence. Do we have any questions? Then so far, everybody's very attentive. Everybody is, is buttering their panes. <laughs> if you want, we can We could take any questions that you have. I'm still reaching for the pink ones. So what we're gonna do is we are going to place these in the oven and only for about eight minutes. And then at the halfway mark, I'm gonna take them out. So once they've been in there four minutes, I'm gonna take them out and flip them over so that one side doesn't get more brown than the other. We're just gonna go ahead and, we're just gonna go ahead and try to get these as crunchy as possible. I like to crunch them up. I've seen other people, make capirotada where they don't crisp the bread at all, but I feel like it really absorbs the liquid nicer if the bread is toasted. I know that Northgate also sells bread already toasted where you don't have to do this part. So it sort of takes some of the legwork out of the recipe. You can buy their bread, it's already toasted in a bag, but if you're gonna do the pan dulce version, you have to toast your own bread. My grandfather used to say, Nicole, hágame un capirotada. And I'd be like, okay, grandpa. <laughs> My grandpa, 
he's no longer with us, but he loves Capirota. And then he'd say, es de película. <laughs> so cute. That's how I learned. That's how I learned. He, you know, would teach me his method. And he had a sweet tooth, so. Pan dulce it was. Plus, we always had pan dulce in our house. Like, you know, he would go to the panaderia and buy a bunch, and then there would just be leftover in the house. And it it came in handy. He comes from a generation of waste nothing. And I like that. I I hope I can instill that in my son. Okay, you see all of these little pieces here all the topping is still on the cutting board that's so golden all right just a few more pieces and then we're gonna be done i made a i made some last night because i don't think that we will be able to get to the end of this recipe with the bake time so so I could show you what it looks like okay almost done and I can't wait to eat it either <laughs> it smelled so good last night I'm like oh, I want that I want to eat that what was the question? I'm sorry, I didn't see it. It says, is there anything we might not want to add to a capirotada? Um, no, I think that, you know, it's really, it's, it's really um, a preference. So today I'm gonna add raisins, apples, peanuts, and cheese, but I know people add bananas. I've seen people add um, pineapple. There's just any fruit that you have in your house and you want to use, you can use. I, I've added, you know, sometimes I, I didn't have peanuts, so I added almonds or pecans. So just any nuts or fruits that you want to add or cheese. Let's take the cheese, for instance. Um, I'm using Monterey Jack cheese today, but some people use cheddar, other people use queso fresco. Um, I've seen people use go, gotija. So it just really depends on your preference. I'm gonna give you the basics and then you can alter it to how you wanna use it. So if you don't wanna use pandulce in the future, use bolillos. So any questions, I love questions. Ask me, ask me, ask me. Okay, so here are here is my tray. And I am going to place this in the oven for four minutes and then I'm going to pull it out. So here we go. Okay, I hear you. So timer, four minutes, and then I'll pull it out and we'll flip them over. In the meantime, let me grab whatever I have here as far as my crumbs are concerned because I want to use them to top my capirotada. And you can see, let me get this out of the way. You can see it's a lot. So it's, it's perfect and I have this the sprinkles from last night when I made it so I could show you all how to do it. It's like a little mosaic of, of pan dulce topping. Okay. So just reserve those. And I'll bring this over here. Let me wash my hands. Remember to wash your hands. So remember that you can use um, you can use dried fruits even. So if you have like you know dried pineapple or even dried coconut, 
all of that works. I'm gonna I'm gonna add coconut to this recipe too because I love coconut. It's so good for you. Okay, so let's start with our sauce. We need to start making our syrup. So I'm gonna get a pot. Oops. I'm gonna get a pot and put it over a medium flame and add in two and a half cups of water. I know that's not a lot, but once we get our sugar in there, so these are my ingredients that I'm going to add to the water. I have, I have two piloncillo cones. Just drop them right in there. And I have three sticks of cinnamon, an anise star. So pretty, right? Like, look at that. So gorgeous. and two cloves. I got a question, somebody asking me what cloves are, and this is what they are, they're just tiny and just so subtle, that little bit is gonna, those few ingredients add such a huge, huge taste, and not only that, it smells incredible. Okay, and then just a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And let that sit for a second. Just, you know, I like to knock down the sugar so that it could melt easier. We're gonna make this while we wait for our bandulce to toast. It's really hard to restrain from, from drinking. This is so good. And of course, I got all of these ingredients at Northgate. I'm sure you got yours there too. Okay. Just cover that for a second. Quiet you. And I'm going to take out my little breads, and they look like they're toasting nicely. And just get some tongs and flip each one over. So they're a little soft still, but you can see they're browning on this side. And we're gonna put them back in for another four to five minutes to get them perfect. And while, they're, while they are in the oven, once we take them out, they'll harden even more. So I just like to, I like to toast them up. And I cannot tell you, well, I'm sure if you're making this with me, you know how delicious this smells. I, I could eat it just like this, okay? Yummy. Toasted pan dulce with a little bit of butter. Who doesn't want that, right? Mm -hmm. We do. We definitely, if you are under the age of 12, you might need it mom, dad, older brother, older sister to help you with this. Okay. And back into the oven they go. They're nice and toasty as you can see. Now let's do the other side. Any questions? Timer for four minutes. Okay, and back to my syrup. And you could see the piloncillo is starting to melt a little bit. 
I love that. Ah, it smells good. Like I said, it was really difficult. I made it. I made this last night so I could show you all how it looks at the end. And I just kept on smelling it through the house. And I'm like, oh my God, it smells so good. These are the big filoncios, but I also have seen Northgate sells them in a little size too. Those are so cute. They're cute for decoration. I know Ashley um, does amazing decoration and I'm sure she probably uses them as her tablescapes. Okay, I can see there is a nice whole building inside of my Piloncio cone, which means we're getting there. And then once we melt the Piloncio, we're just gonna lower the flame all the way to a simmer and let this simmer so that all the flavor from the, from the cinnamon sticks or canela sticks, um, could infuse the syrup along with the anise star and the cloves. It's just simple, you know, like I think about our ancestors and whoever came up with this recipe, like where, how did they decide that, you know, these flavors were gonna go together? They're so genius, so brilliant. You know, I go to the market and it's, it's a complete adventure for me. I just feel like there's so many options and there's all these ingredients that we can bring together to make so many beautiful dishes. And we're so lucky that we have that available to us and so thankful that Northgate provides all of these ingredients that maybe other markets don't. And we have it at our fingertips here in Southern California. Happiness. Thank you. Thank you, Northgate. And they make my house smell really good too. Do we have any questions? Is everyone following along? I'm just over here busy trying to break up this piloncio. It's getting there. A few more seconds on the clock with the. I think I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna take my toasts out because they look like they're done. And at the same time, I'm gonna lower the temperature to 350 degrees. So go ahead and lower your oven to 350 degrees and. Here are my little they're done. They look perfect. This is the this is what we're looking for. Um, you can see this side is brown and this side is brown. So I'm just gonna let them sit there while we finish building up our syrup. Don't forget to lower the temperature in your oven to 350 degrees. That's the baking temperature. All right. All of the scents smell so good. Do we have any questions? Is everyone following along at this point? All right, it's coming.
the boys in my house are so happy right now. They're they're like, as soon as that capirota is done, we want it. <laughs> they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to get their spoon quick because if not, I'm gonna eat it all. All right. So we're just gonna go ahead and lower this all the way and, and put a lid on it and keep it there. Put it on the back burner. Okay. So now, here we go. I am going to move this out of the way so that I can start building. So I'm going to go ahead and take a nine by nine baking dish. If you have something a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, as long as you're able to fit all your breads in the dish, that's what we're looking for. And I'm going to butter it. If you don't if you don't want to use butter, you can use a nonstick baking spray here, or you can grease it with a little bit of oil, but I'm going to use butter and I'm just going to go ahead and use my hands because it's the easiest way to do it. And just give it a good, give it a good swipe of butter. I just, you know, act like you're painting, painting every little crevice. All right, let me wash my hands. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. Okay, next. I am going to get my pan dulce on here. Let me move this. So now you can see, I am going to take half of my bambulse here and just line the bottom. And it's so nice. It's perfectly crunchy. Can you guys, oh, oh my God. Oh God, thank you setting up fire alarms over here. Not now, crazy. Okay. Did I scare you guys? Okay, and then you can see, let's see, maybe this one goes here. It's like, it's like getting a puzzle in order. And if you don't, if you, can't fit a piece in, just break a piece. Like we're just trying to get all of the bottom, all of the bottom in. Um, so I just fill all the little pieces up. It's a Tetris for panecitos. Okay. Oh, no. this smells so good. Okay. So now I 
and I'm pushing them in. I don't care if they crumble or any of that. We just want them in the dish. Okay, hold on, let me. So I'm just gonna also now strain my, strain my syrup. And you'll definitely need help with this if you are a child. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this and put it here. And take two gloves and just pour it through the strainer. Okay, let's hope this does it. Mm, actually, I'm gonna do this over the sink just because I feel like I don't wanna I don't wanna spill. Are you all straining your are you all straining your syrup now too? Okay, just, I'm just want to get out the cinnamon sticks and the clove and the any star. Perfect. And no spills. So that's good. Okay. So now we have this hot liquid that we're working with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, this is three fourths of a cup, but I'm gonna just dip it in here and pour it right over the top. And oh, this is the first step to deliciousness. Take a little bit more. I love to see the liquid go right into the bun and soak it up. You just know you're in for a treat. Okay, just a little bit more. Yeah, we want it to be completely soaked and it's okay if you see the liquid at the bottom there. Okay, so now I am gonna set this to the side and we are gonna peel and cut out the apple. So I didn't I didn't do the apple ahead of time just because it would brown too much if I did this prior so Doing your apple while you're making it is always a good idea. Just if you if you want it to not look super browned. Um, when it bakes, it'll brown slightly, but not too much. And then you can identify it as apple instead of cheese. Okay. And I'm gonna use half of this apple. I'm gonna use half of this apple in the middle and then half on top. So what I like to do is I like to cut down that way and down that way, like two parallels. And then that way you get an even amount for each layer, okay? So my first layer will be these two and then these two will be for the top. And the same, I just cut it into pieces like that. You could cut them small if you want, you could cut them big. However, you like your apple, if you're adding apple, or you could add banana at this point. I like apple and I like the tartness of it. So these pieces are too big for me. So what I do is I go ahead and just line them all up like this. 
and then I chop them in threes so that we have littler pieces. And that's that. Okay. So there's my apple. Bring this pretty baby back into the scene and just go ahead and spread it evenly. Spread your apple in. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'll be friends with this capirotada all day long. Okay. Next, I'm going to take a little bit of coconut and just add it in as well. I'm going to save the rest for the top, but I'm not going to put it on the top layer till I'm done baking it. Okay. And then I have a half a cup of peanuts and I'm just going to use half of that. So just a handful of peanuts. Doesn't it look like a little party? It's a party. It's a little fiesta in the pan. Okay. And raisins, the jewel of this dish. I'm using yellow raisins or as they call them on the box, golden raisins. They really are golden, but any raisin will do. Black raisins too. Okay. And last but not least for this layer is the cheese. And I'm only gonna use half of the amount I have here and I'm just you know, I like to keep it in clumps because then we get that yummy, chewy cheese pool. Again, if you're making this plant-based, just eliminate the cheese. Or if you want the cheese, but the other person in the house doesn't, then just keep it on one side of the dish. I love the cheese. And this dish is sort of, not sort of, it needs a cheese. Delicious. I think the cheese is what throws most people for a loop is they're like, what, cheese? Yes, yes, cheese. And especially if it's next to a piece of raisin or apple or any of that, it's yummy. Okay. And then the rest I'm just gonna leave for the top of my capirotada. But it looks like a little art piece. That's how I think about it. Like it's like a little piece of art. It's a Jackson Pollock. If you know who Jackson Pollock is, you know what I'm saying. He used to get, he used to get paint and just like dip it in a dip it in he used to get a brush and just dip it in paint and then splatter everywhere and it would come out looking like this so okay continue now out with another layer of your pan dulce so we want to make sure it all fits um you can lean it up against each other like this the way i am the way i'm doing it or you could lay it flat depends on your on your baking dish so maybe I don't have enough to do it layered like that but I will definitely make it so it all looks good okay now here we go with more let me just make sure can you see that? La. All right. I'm going to keep this um, baking dish. I mean, not baking, my, my little tray that I baked the pan on just so that we could then place this on top. So if any liquid overflows, it doesn't, it doesn't fall to the bottom of your oven. Okay, 
So let me just get this going here. And I'm gonna go ahead and soak the top bun dulce with more liquid. And be careful when you pour it in, especially since it's high to the top, you don't want it to pour over. And just make sure they're all nice and damp. It smells so good. I know I keep saying that because I want to eat it. <laughs> Take your time, you know, it's fine. Let's see, okay. Yay. Okay. Let's finish chopping the rest of our apples so that we could go ahead and add those. Because I have bigger layers here, I think I might, I might leave my apples in bigger layers as well for the top. Um, I feel like it'll look pretty. Is everyone following along? Do we have any questions? Okay. Let's see. Pretty apples. Just approach it like you are making a little art piece, a mosaic of, of colors and textures. Well, there's an extra piece of apple for me. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna top with more peanuts because we love the peanuts in there. Some people say extra peanuts, please. I kind of am with them. Okay. And we want to put the rest of our raisins on top too. Oh my God, it's gonna be so good. We're so lucky that we're going to have capirotada on a Saturday. And you can make this dish all Lent season. You can make it whenever your heart desires year round. Um, I know people only make it during Lent time, but I don't know. It's pretty special. You've never had it with apples. I know some people, I know a lot of people put bananas. You don't have to put apples if you don't want. I feel like the apple adds such a beautiful um, layer of flavor to it. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful compliment to the cheese too. So, like I said, I'm using Monterey Jack cheese. A lot of people use cotija, they use queso fresco, they use uh, cheddar. It's so decadent and beautiful. The cheese is fantastic in this dish and I wouldn't, I wouldn't leave it out to be honest with you. But make this your own, make it however you think is best. These are the basics of how to do it. If you don't want to add apple, don't add apple. Okay. Happiness. I'm so excited. Okay. And then I'm just going to take the rest of my syrup that I have. 
So there's very little at this point. I just pour it over the top. Okay. And you put this pretty gat rotada in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. Let all the cheese melt and let the let the liquid absorb on into the bread and it'll also evaporate the liquid a little bit. So you just have this rich condensed taste in your capirotada. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven now. And make sure I set my timer. Oops. For 30 minutes. Hi. So like I said, I made one last night to show you what it looks like. So let me grab that and then I'll show you how we're gonna decorate it. Okay, so let's see. So this is what it'll look like when it comes out of the oven. You can see with this one, I didn't have a lot of space. So what I did was, what's the question? I'm sorry. They want to know if you already added the pan dulce topping. No, I add it at the end as a decoration. So here I have my finished pan dulce. I take some coconut, the other half of the coconut, and I add it to the top. I don't like to add the coconut to the top when it's baking because coconut burns easily and so as a middle layer it's fine but as a top layer it should be added once it comes out and this one I toasted on my own but you don't need to toast it if you don't want to this is just the top layer so I add some coconut to the top and then I take my Pan dulce sprinkles, and those get added to the top here now too. All those good little crunchy bits that we had. And just go ahead and add these up to the top. And then I add the traditional candy sprinkles. And I know that, I know that some people just use the little balls, but I've added I've added stars and hearts and other sprinkles to it because it's cute and it's festive. And who doesn't want a little, a little heart or star on their capirotada? It's like you go to the cake section in Northgate and they have a bunch of different sprinkles. Buy a few and mix them together to make a to make a fancy sprinkle mix. You know, they sell those really fancy sprinkle mixes and they're super expensive. You could do it on your own at home and have one that's cuter actually. So this is it. This is what it looks like when you're done and dig in, dig in. We have a, we have a few minutes, so why don't we make a banana wacky to wash it down? I know that I know that <clears throat> people are always thinking, well, what can we drink with this? And I don't know what people drink with it traditionally because there's so much flavor, but I thought since I didn't use banana in my capirotada, I would make a banana wacky for you all and just show you it's a simple little drink and let's do that. So let me grab my frozen bananas. I have the recipe there on my instruction. It's super, super simple. I'm just gonna 
wrapping all my ingredients. So, okay. when I was a little girl, my uncle used to make this drink for me all of the time, except he used to add a raw egg to it and call it a banana wacky. In the, when I was a kid, it was okay to do that. I don't think that it's that great of an idea to do that now. So we're going to skip the egg and just continue with the rest of the ingredients. I'm using a frozen banana. If I could get it off of this plate. There we go. Yeah. And some ice. I guess I guess my uncle thought he was Rocky Balboa eating the, the raw egg. But and then I took five almonds, two tablespoons of abuelita chocolate granulated, and a little bit of cinnamon. You could see that little, that little bit of cinnamon right there. And just going to add that in. And I'm using a cup of milk. You could also use a cup of horchata. They sell beautiful horchata at Northgate if you want to keep this um, dairy free or oat milk or anything else that you that you like that's milky. And that's it. Put it in a blender. And let's see on. And this is about to get loud, but here we go. Yum, banana wacky. Can't wait to have you. It's like a, it's like a souped up smoothie. It's thick and yummy. The frozen banana really adds a nice texture to it. And I'm about to be very happy with my capirotada and my banana wacky. So I hope you enjoyed this class. Mm. I hope you enjoyed this class. I hope you'll make your capirotada at home. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having us Northgate. Have a beautiful Saturday, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. See you next time. Yay! Yes! Sign up for my class. I'm doing a cream of zucchini soup with an epic grilled cheese next and a fruit salad. I think that is March 27th. So join me. Bye, everyone.